I did not think that I would ever have occasion to pilot a suit of Magitek armor again. Least of all under these circumstances. My full name is Lucia Go Junius, and I was born a citizen of Garlemald. That explains it. When we first met in Ishgard, I very nearly called you Livia. Livia? Livia Sasjunius? The tribunus who served under Gaius van Bailsar? Aye, she was my sister. Though we spent little time together. After our parents were killed in an uprising, we were sent to live in different households, setting us on separate paths. Livia felt at home on the battlefield and chose to become a soldier, while I underwent training to become a spy. Then, Ishgard was... My mission. It was believed that Alagarn relics of great worth were stored in the vault, and I was sent to investigate. Though I was given little information at the time, I now suspect I was searching for the Kiwi but recently lost. And then I met Sir Emmerich. It was his usefulness to my mission which prompted me to approach him. But I soon found myself drawn to him for other reasons. He too was a prisoner of his past, judged for his heritage as a bastard son of the Archbishop. Yet unlike my sister and I, he did not curse his fate. He simply rose above it. In time, I came to realize that I had found a man worth following, and a new home besides. And when I subsequently confessed all to Sir Emmerich, he was good enough to accept me into his service. I do not question your loyalty to Sir Emmerich. It is your loyalty to your sister which concerns me. I have long been of the opinion that those who dwell in the past risk losing sight of their future. My sister fought for her convictions and for those she held dear. So do I. So must we all. Well, I for one am happy to welcome a fellow Garlean to our merry band. Especially one who can make Magitek armor sing. Chief, we should be getting close. Once we break through those clouds, we'll be right where the light was pointing. Right where Azizla should be. Hold on, everyone! Mistaking their handiwork. What was that? Some sort of barrier. She won't hold, Chief. She's breaking up. I've lost the auxiliary propeller! Sid, it's no use! We must return to Ishgard and find another way! God damn it all! 
Why do the Alagans always have to make everything so bloody complicated? In summary, the Isle owes its lofty position to the industry of the Alagans. And we can be all but certain that the Archbishop and his cronies are enjoying the view from its top. I see. If we are to join them, we will first need to pass through the Isle's etheric barrier, which is, alas, more powerful than most. Powerful enough to make a mess of a perfectly good airship at any rate. As far as I can gather, the barrier mechanism draws ether from the surrounding environment and polarizes its elemental aspect to produce what is, in effect, a wall of lightning. It seems plain that without the Vanu's key, any attempt to reach the Isle will end in failure. Alas, the key was careless enough to leave without us, and I don't think the Vanu keep a spare. Master Garland, based on your experience, is there no other way that we might breach the barrier? Well, in the past, we've beaten similar barriers by nullifying them with elemental converters. But the one we're up against this time dwarfs all that we've encountered before. The Enterprise simply isn't large enough to bear the requisite amount of crystals. I'm reminded of the quantity needed to nullify Leviathan's command of the sea. A veritable mountain of crystals that could only be borne by lashing two galleons together to form a twin vessel, scarcely able to propel itself, much less fly. That said, we're not without options. If it isn't feasible to nullify the barrier, we might try piercing it. How? Oh. We create a ram of condensed ether and mount it on my ship. There's just one problem. I don't have the faintest idea how to build one. It's going to take a true authority in the field, I reckon. Would that the Archons were still with us. But yesterday evening, I chanced to find Mistress Tataru in unusually high spirits. Assuming I understood her excited ramblings correctly, she has acquired a clue, pointing to the whereabouts of one such individual. An Archon? Truly? Ha! Fortune favors the righteous, eh? Well then, let's not waste any time. While you go and look for our missing friend, I'll work on modifying the Enterprise. A hull will need reinforcing to bear the punishment, not to mention a mount for the ram. Just you wait, my pretty. By the time I'm finished, you'll be an airship reborn.
In requesting the Elemental's assistance to find your Stola, you must needs be aware of one difficulty. A difficulty born of the fundamental difference between man and Elemental. That being... In perceiving the world around him, man relies upon senses such as sight and sound. For the sake of convenience, he gives names to such things as are near or dear to him. Being formed of pure ether, however, such concepts are foreign to the elementals. Instead, they perceive by observing the ebb and flow of the energies of life. So profound a division cannot be bridged with simple discourse. The elementals' voices stir not the air, and thus reach not our ears, while our words are but wind to them. Though we seers can commune with them through feelings, naught that we can impart will serve to aid them in identifying Yishtola. Nay, they must needs be presented with ether which is akin to hers. If you could but find a family member. Oh! I know just the person! Yishtola has a sister who came to live in Gradania. She told me about her once. Oh, that is most fortunate indeed. Pray, seek this sister out then, and bring her to Evershade. There, we shall petition the Great One's aid in finding your lost companion. Let us begin. Raya O, Arun, if you would. Hearken to me, O oh Great Ones. Pray, give yourselves to the life stream, a drifting soul to find. Please, Yishtola, please come back to us.
There. Now. The room has been readied at the roost. Pray, bear her thither at once. All that remains is to pray, my friends. Tataru. <laughs> you are safe. Thank the Twelve. Something has changed about you, Elphino. Or mayhap the change is with me. I seem to sense the ether around me more keenly than before. I am pleased to see you well again. Do you feel strong enough to talk? Worry not. I am well enough. Tell us then. What befell you after you fled the feast? We were told that there had been a tunnel collapse. That was my doing. I brought the tunnel down that you and Minfidia might escape. At the last moment, I invoked a teleportation magic, in hopes of spiriting Thancred away at least. Needless to say, it did not go quite as planned, and I found myself adrift in the life stream. The others? Where are they? Did they not escape? They remain unaccounted for. You were the only one we have been able to find. I am truly sorry. It was the Crystal Braves who pursued you that day. My hubris that led to our undoing. No apologies are necessary, Alpha No. You are not to blame for what occurred. Know that were our comrades here, they would commend you for keeping the light of hope alive. Don't, don't worry. The others are alive and well, I'm sure of it. We just need to find them. Indeed, Tataru. 
Let us find our friends and rebuild the Scions. Ha! There is the Alphano I remember. And I feel much the better for his return. Tis time I arose. <gasps> that reminds me! I have a change of clothes for you! I don't like to boast, but I made them myself. I learned how to weave while we're in Ishgard, you see? Tataru has apprised me of all that took place in the aftermath of the assassination plot. It would seem I have been away for some while. Yes, much and more happened during your absence. At present, we seek to follow the Archbishop to Azisla. And you want for some manner of etheric ram to pierce the floating isle's protective barrier? We do. Might you be able to furnish us with one? A means to prise open a hole in an Alagarn barrier. And one large enough to admit an airship, no less. Hmm. Nay, I lack the knowledge to devise such a weapon. But I know of one who could. A leading figure in the field of etheric research, and one of the finest scholars ever to grace Charlian. Matoya, my former master. to the Thaliac River, where to the melted snows of Abelathia's spine eventually find their way by means of a thousand silver streams. whose waters have long nourished the Trevanian hinterlands, and so provided for a settlement of learned souls from across the northern seas. To the city of Charlian, that great seat of knowledge now abandoned by her keepers, they came. 